Anita Baker decided to leave everything behind, leave wherever she is. I think she ran into the Detroit. I don't know you, Detroit. But if Anita Baker decided to quit everything, move down to the D.C. play every night at the McDonald's over there on the University Boulevard, you better believe that shit will be done. Well, hello there, love bugs. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky lookies would be our Priscilla personality frames. I'm going to be adding some more in there okay these aren't readers just these are just plain frames okay but i like to judge up my look sometimes and switch it around you know because sometimes i feel like a nut sometimes i don't and sometimes a personality frame will do that for you so go on over there to uptopbeauty.com and check out what we have and if you are not already a part of our book club please Hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies. Yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, baby, we wrapping this book up. I know you like, now you said that before. We are, we wrapping the book up. And guys, don't forget that I have switched the um bobby womack q a from this friday the 9th to next friday september 16th okay book club members paying book club members only because the rest of you ninjas i appreciate your like i really do but the paying book club members you guys are the ones who decide what the next book is okay so we've been talking about the tell-all book about tina turner um, I have the Ray Charles book right here. I'm trying to think of the third book that I want to give you all for an option, but I think those two are going to be pretty good. Ray Charles and David Ritz. We know David Ritz is like one of our favorite authors. Okay. But, um, I'm trying to think of the third book. And if you're not a paying book club member, just don't just leave it alone. Let it go. Cause some of y'all be like, I know, I know. No, you don't know. Because you're not a paying book club member. Babies. Let's finish up this Bobby Womack book. As I drink my Starbucks dragon fruit mango pit. Put, put, I don't know what this is. Watermelon juice. Otis Smith's pitch was pretty good. He said that the white man had been taking money from the black artist for too long. I wasn't signed with anyone, so I got myself a new label. Me and Smith talked about how it would work out. I had resurfaced mentally and spiritually. I was happy. Later, Johnny Teller, who replaced Sam Cooke in the Soul Stirs and recorded for his SNR and Derby label, joined and had a record out on Beverly Glenn. Anita Baker, the female lead singer of Chapter 8, who Smith worked with, also recorded her first album, The Songstress, for his label in 1983. If I find a way to love you, hey, can I well, Let me tell y'all something about Anita Baker in D.C., okay? It's something about her, Frankie the Beverly, you know, Marvin Gaye, he didn't disown us, but we still got that nigga back. DC, if they ain't nothing else, they loyal to the bullshit. If Anita okay. Baker decided to leave everything behind, 
leave wherever she is. I think she ran into the Detroit. I don't know you, Detroit, like that. Okay, I just know from the books. But if Anita Baker decided to quit everything, move down to the D.C. play every night at the McDonald's over there on the University Boulevard, you better believe that shit will be back. That's how much D.C. loves Anita Baker. Okay, and the Frank and Beverly. Okay, and the Marvin Gaye, even though he disowned our asses. I went in the studio on my own and started recording. Eight tracks. The album started with so many sides of you and finished on where do we go from here somewhere between them is if you think you're lonely now which is one of the standout tracks and one of the album's hits the poet came out in 1981 it was hailed as a masterpiece that was about as far as it did work out because the next bit was a real blow i didn't get paid the album was selling tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands, but nothing was coming my way. Very little anyway. Smith looked at me as a worn out junkie, somebody who had talent, but didn't know who he was. He disrespected me. Damn. Pay attention to the people you have around you. Pay attention to the snakes that slither around you, baby. Because I didn't say it before. Sometimes you don't even understand that you will come up. You hear me? Sometimes people look at you as not an equal, but a come up. I asked Smith for something like 50,000 against future royalties. He told me he'd get back to me the next day. I didn't get that 50 grand, nowhere near it. Then I saw Otis Smith less and less. The next time I saw him, he was in court. It took nearly three years for the case to go through the legal process. It was a really drawn out battle and the bills kept stacking up. Attorneys would leave the case. New ones would join. I spent so much money in that damn courthouse. I ended up writing a song there. I had my day, week, and month in court. Pause. Y'all know I used to be P.O., right? Man, let me tell y'all something. Court would be so long on the Jesus. Okay, this is how court works. I, I even tried to tell the powers I be, listen, look, you like, nay, where you been all day in Mother Hunchy Court? Okay? And I know it's reports to be written back there. I know it's stuff that I got to do back at the office. But guess what? Your honor wants me here in court with him. I want you, supervisor, to go to the judge, Judge Judy, whoever the hell the name of the judge is. Go to the Judge Judy and you tell the Judge Judy, oh, now you got to come back to the office because she got a report to write. Judge Judy don't give a fuck about your report. Judge Judy want me right there in court because if she ready... For me to, you know, stand before her, then I'm there to stand before her. And sometimes, baby, when I tell you them damn hearings be scheduled at 9 and we don't get seen to 1, one thirty, that was the heartbreaking and stuff. I'd be just sitting in court. we just be sitting in court waiting. And then when you hear the Your Honor be like, oh, we about to take a recess. What? What? Bitch, baby, what? we used to go to this place, um... When I went to the PG courthouse, it was this place in Upper Marlboro, right? I forget the name of the place, man. They had good ass food, right? Child, we be in there, you know, passing the time. Who know? We got to pay for lunch. You know what I'm saying? Because what you going to do? Sit there and stall? You been in court all damn day. So we in lunch and the judges around there. The, the court is supposed to reconvene at 1 o'clock. Their mother still eating at lunch at 1.30. I'm looking at the judge like your honor. Could you come on? I gotta get back to the office. I had my day, week, and month in court. Gave my evidence and sat and watched Smith deliver his. Watched and heard several versions of the truth come out. Then at the end of each very long day, I would go back to the Beverly Hills Hotel. Have a drink, a cocktail, order dinner, and then go through the strategy plan for the following day's session. I'd order wine, go over it, do some more preparations during mains, finish that, and then work on it again. Then work on it again through dessert. I used to do all that every single evening after court finished, and I had a dinner companion that was Alan Klein. Alan Klein is a shrewd, sharp businessman. Alan also has a lot of heart. That's something I know. He might not be a singer or a writer, but he can take a song across the world just as easily.
When I first knew Alan Klein in the early 1960s, he was Sam Cooke's accountant. Alan was young then and fat. He wore, why the hell did that matter? He wore one blue suit and a stripy tie. The suit used to shine so much you could use it as a mirror. That's because they was using this thing called starch. He was the kind of guy who didn't care how much you pushed him away. He would keep coming back time and time again. Like a bee on honey. During the time of Sam Cook, Alan would never come in the dressing room after the show and say it was fantastic. He'd only be there to tell Sam what the problem or problems were. Tell him the show sucked, that the third song shouldn't have been there, or that the outfit wasn't making it. He was the only guy who did that. That's called a hater. Sam was shocked at how much cash had been swilling around. Cash that was his by right. And he was very interested in Alan after that. And the moves Alan made. He gave him a piece of the real action. Well, the reason why Sammy Cookie didn't have a problem with the Alan, hater ass Alan coming in, giving his two cents on everything that was wrong, never what was right, was because Sammy Cookie realized that Alan was good with the money. Okay, you always keep a bitch that's good with the money. Close. I don't care how much starch he put in his pants. Sam was shocked at how much cash had been swilling around. Cash that was his by rights. And he was very interested in Alan after that. And the moves Alan made. He gave him a piece of the real action then, and that put Alan on the management track. Barbara had sold some of Sam's publishing to Alan. I did the same a few years Klein and his company, ABKCO Music, became my publisher. They didn't get all my songs, but enough, including a lot of the songs from the poet. That was something else I regretted. At the time I sold it in the 80s, Alan advised me against it. I wanted to lay my hands on some big money and fast. But Alan told me not to sell. He said the publishing, my writings had no price. It was price less. He also told me it would take care of me for life on the Jesus. That's why they be like, nay, you need your own show. No, I don't. I got my own show. He on the YouTube. And when I kick the bucket, my niece and my nephews will be sure to get a part of it every month as long as the YouTube is around. Mm. Mm. I didn't listen. So Alan told me that whichever publishing company won out with the highest bid, he would triple it. Don't know why I didn't ask for a loan, but I have too much pride. I wouldn't want to ask somebody for something without giving them some sort of collateral. That collateral was my songs, my songwriting, my life. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Now remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. Y'all better have a good one. Please don't forget to go visit Uptop Beauty, guys. Have a good one.